Yo guys, Features Gaming here. Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today we are back on Train Sim World 3 for Into the Driving Route. And today we are doing a scenario on the London Underground. Obviously, here in the UK, in London, there is obviously a very famous tube service uh, called the London Underground. So I'm going to be doing the scenario of, of calling all stations, which we are going to be stopping at every single station in the London Underground on this train, in the London Underground train, as you can see. So it says, welcome to Elephant, Elephant and Castle Station. This is a northbound service to the end, basically. So let's go ahead and start by opening the doors. I think everything is already set up. That isn't actually in at the moment. So let's go ahead and activate that. The director selection thing is in forward. We need to bring this into uh, off and release. Uh, there we go. So we should be good to go when we can. So looks like we need or we're going to be departing shortly. So let's go ahead and just put the brake position just in one real quick. And then we will go ahead and close the doors now. And then hopefully by the time the doors have closed, we should be able to go underway. So let's get going a little bit early than what we were supposed to. But uh, that is what we need to do. Oh. This wants me to do this, which I've already done. There we go. Next station will be Lambeth North. I think that's how you pronounce it. In 800 yards. So, oh, I'm speeding. These stations aren't really, you know, like that long. Um, you know, um, they, they aren't a long distance between each other. They're, quite, you know, they are quite close. So it should be a very stop and start journey unlike the last one. Which is what I like. Maybe a few stations or you know, you know, many stations that uh could be a bit uh interesting, but certainly, you know, like stations every now and then, you know, are good. But I kind of like driving on the London Underground, so it's good. Now I haven't completely mastered the braking, but I saw I sort of like try and aim to enter the station like going 30 or whatnot, and then put it on to brake two. So like here I go on to brake two or Rio two dot ep min. And just let it slow down. And then I sort of like aim to enter this last box in at 10. Put it in 1. And usually it stops in time. Maybe I have to activate, you know, number 2 if I am coming in a bit too quick. But usually it, it, does, the, uh, it does the job. Let me just re-move uh, my camera a little bit. There we go. So yes, we've got a lot of stations. We've got Waterloo, Embankment. We actually need to get going soon, actually. Oh, we're fine. Uh, Embankment, Charing Cross, Piccadilly Circus, Oxford Circus, Regent's Park, Baker Street, Marleybone, Edgware Road, Paddington, Warwick Avenue, Media Vale, uh, Kilburn Park. Let's go ahead and close the doors. Queen's Park, Kensal Green, uh, Wilsden Junction, I think. Uh, Harlesden, Stonebridge Park, Wembley Central, North Wembley, South Kenton, Kenton, Harrow, uh, or and that, and that's the final station. So, a lot of stations, <laughs> a lot of stations indeed. And I'm speeding again. Yeah, these speed limits are very, uh, very variable in the uh, in the. Uh, dungeon. Oh, I actually arrived there way too early. I thought it was 1702.30, not 17.03. Oops. <laughs> Oops. I entered that I entered that station way too early. I actually don't know where the next station is. Uh that's interesting. I think this might actually be the next station. 
And it is as well. Well, luckily, I kind of know roughly how to drive uh, this journey without using the UI or, you know, these breaking points. Because, uh, you know, as I said, you know, I sort of enter the station, that's when I start braking. It's just where I stop, I uh, I sometimes don't know where to, uh, where to go. 1705 is when we're supposed to uh, depart. Not 1704.30. 30. <laughs> so we could have a look around the uh, train while we're here, as you can see. Very much looks like the uh, London Underground with the tube station. As you can see. Looks very much like what it does like it what it like what it does in real life. So the actual tube uh, train itself. And yeah. This just brings back memories, honestly. Because I don't actually really go on the London you know, on the London Underground anymore. You know, when I used to go to London, like, you know, back in you know, 2018, 2019, when we went. I didn't actually, uh, we don't usually go on the tube anymore. I think the last time I went on the tube was in probably early 2018 or late 2017. I'm not entirely sure. Because, obviously, it gets quite hot down here. Uh, obviously, in the summer, it gets really hot and uh, it's not where you want to be. And we just prefer to take taxis or, you know, like, other modes of transportation. Like, you know, Ubers and stuff like that. We don't really usually go on the, uh, on the underground. But it just brings back memories to, you know, when we were little and we used to go to London. You know, going to shows or going to... Or even going on holiday. You know, I remember we... Um, sometimes used to take the trains when we went to like a hotel in London, like when we went to the Ritz or, you know, somewhere else. And as I said, you know, shows or different things, you know, like, um, going to Hamley's, m and World, something like that. The memories are just, they're always there. And I haven't been to every single underground station. I've been to most of them, I think. But I think this is a station I haven't been to in Bankment. Or not been for a very long time. Because I don't seem to remember this. <laughs> you know, something looking like this in an underground for some time. So, it could have been that I have been to... Oh, we can actually go now. Oops. I was actually too busy wanting to uh, look around the station. Yeah, I don't. Re I don't remember look uh, looking at a uh, at an underground station looking like that for some time. So, next stop, Charing Cross or Char Caring? No, Charing Cross. Char Charing Cross. I think there's multiple ways to pronounce this. I, I just pronounce it as it's spelled Charing Cross, which I think is the main way. Sometimes when I used to go on the on the London Underground, I used to get very confused on which um, stations we used to, uh, or which trains we had to catch and you know, which service it was as well. Like, you know, is it Bakerloo, Circle, things like that. I probably actually shouldn't station C because we can actually go as soon as the uh, passengers have finished loading up. That was something that I um, didn't really know exactly how to do. You know, I, you know, my 
parents would always have to you know like remind me you know follow the purple line or follow the orange line or whatever <laughs> we didn't really used to go off the names we used to go off the uh, off the colors and um yeah i'd always have to count the stations of how many we had left and stuff like that now i could probably work it out and stuff but obviously back then i didn't really know <laughs> Honestly, when you're in the tube and you know you're going through that tunnel, it feels like you're flying. But in reality, you know, you're only going like 30 odd miles an hour. When it it feels like you're going <laughs> Honestly, it feels like you're going 100, you know, like <laughs> it's you feel like you're going way quicker than you're actually going. Oh, that's closed doors. I want to open them. There's another train on the uh, on the other platform. I think this is the Bakerloo service. Uh, by the way, I don't think they have any other services in Trainsome yet. And if they will actually be importing, you know, any other um underground services are um, you know are they going to bring circus in you know, circus circle in you know are they going to bring in jubilee i don't know another reason why i absolutely love the underground is because obviously there's a childhood tv show i'm pretty sure anyone who has been on the underground exactly knows what it is which is underground ernie um you know what a childhood show that was and all of the different I mean, I don't know which came first. I think it was the London Underground and maybe Underground Ernie took it. Um, but I watched... I think I knew Underground Ernie before I knew of the London Underground, like, fully. And, you know, all of the trains in Underground Ernie were named after the London Underground services. And, yeah, it was just. <laughs> it's just awesome to, you know, just see, you know, your childhood show and, you know, something. Well, I mean, I don't know. You know, as I said, you know, I don't know which one came first. But it was just cool to me, you know. Going on the London Underground and, you know, going on these services, you know, that were featured in my childhood, you know, favourite show. But we are really going through these stations, I think. Regents Park next. We've still got a long way to go. But we're getting through them. Close the doors. Yeah, these trains don't stop for long and they are very regular in these uh in these underground stations. I think in peak times, they can be once every, like, 90 seconds or something, which is crazy. Or, you know, like, once every minute. You know, the underground is so, you know, efficient with transporting passengers all around the city. It's, it's quite crazy when you think of the, you know, the logistic of it and stuff. It's honestly incredible. any hold up and well you're going to be stuck for a few minutes
And I think what they aim to do is they aim to have trains, you know, at the next station. So say, for example, if I was coming up to this station, if, if there was a train in front of me, which I probably think there is, I don't know if there will be, there'll be... Um, they'll be approaching and stopping at Baker Street. So as soon as I'm departing here, they'll be departing Baker Street. Obviously, I don't know how much of that is true. So take as much of it as you want. But let's go ahead and close the doors and off to Baker Street we go from Regent's Park. I think towards the end of this route, we do go overground, so we'll see what the conditions are like, because I actually have no idea what the conditions are like, because we're underground at the moment. Oh, speeding slightly. Come on, bring down the speed. It's very tricky to manage the speed in the underground. I don't know what it is about these curved platforms. <laughs> Probably think about getting a thumbnail as well at some point. Open the doors. I think I might get the thumbnail when we're like outside and not really in the uh, in the actual underground. Because we're stopping so close to, you know, the tunnel, we barely have any chance to, you know, get an actual thumbnail. Start breaking now as we are approaching Marleybone. I think someone told me how it's pronounced. I think it's something like that. That's oh, a good stop, that. Came in a bit too quick, but managed to slow it down just enough. Oh. Thumbnail opportunity here. I don't care if I'm late. Why is this thing not in service? Don't know why it's saying that, because we clearly are in service. Why are there two buttons to open the doors on the right and on the left? but then only one button to close them. I've never actually understood that.
Here we are arriving into Edge Rare Road. Ed Edge Rare Road now. Oh, a bit more braking. Oh my god. That's a bit of an overshoot there. Overestimated that one. You can't actually go into external. Yeah, that's fine. Small overshoots here and there. If you're not overshooting stations, then you're not a good driver. I think that's a... A sort of a thing I go off. You know, every, every good driver has to skip a station at one point in their life, so... <laughs> I think we're allowed. I keep forgetting the speed limit. I actually go down to a 20 soon, so let's actually start bringing down that speed. Paddington Station next. What sort of advertisement is that? Open. Did I, did I not open the doors? Oh, I opened them. Might have clicked the wrong button. Close the doors because we're ready to go. Off to Warwick Avenue. I say we're about halfway through the journey right now. Still got a ton more uh, stations to go, though. The speed limits. <laughs> they're so, you know, they're so weird. Obviously, <laughs> in the in the underground, they they change so quickly. Going up a uh, pretty steep incline. Start braking now. I think we'll let it coast at the moment. I don't know how I get there without first going over that barrier because you can't actually really go over the barrier until, you know, like to fix that screen, you know, I, I don't know how I get actually in there to do the thing. Off to the next station now. In about a mile few yards here and there. Actually, not in a mile, in about half a mile. You know what I mean.
There's a 50 mile an hour speed limit in a mile. I'm not looking forward to that. Same thing here, you can't go over the thing to do that. I mean, you can literally shut down the train and then obviously open the door and go and fix it that way, but that just takes too long. Right, I think we'll be going overground in... I think it's after Queen's Park you start going overground. I'm not too sure. I know at least for Stonebridge Park, that's overground. But I'm not too sure at which point does it actually switch to being overground. I'm wondering if it is to do with that 50 mile an hour speed limit. Yeah, or, or as you know, going on to the overground section. Yeah, even though it is called the London Underground, uh, in case a few of you were thinking, wait, I thought you just said it's all underground. Not all of the underground is actually under the ground. I think most of it is, or something like you know, parts of it is. Um, but there is uh, some parts of the underground that are actually overground on the actual streets and stuff. For those who uh, have never heard of the underground. However, I'm pretty sure anyone who either lives in the UK or has wanted to visit the UK. Um, you know, like tourists and stuff. I'm pretty sure everyone has heard of the London Underground. Who has, you know, visited London. It's a Pretty, you know, it's one of the major uh, things, uh, I would say. Have the entire city a great way to get around uh, London. Right, I'm guessing this is where we actually do go overground then. Because we do go up a uh, pretty steep incline. Just trying to maintain that 15 because it'll be dropping down soon. Here we are then at Queen's Park. I thought it was after Queen's Park. I guess it was just one station off. going through the yard is going to be 10 mile an hour which is going to be even more annoying
Off we go now to Kensal Green. Oh, we're getting a, we're getting a bit of will slip here. It's not wet or anything. What's going on with the power? <laughs> We can go external now because we're no longer underground. And now that we are overground, we uh, the stations are going to be a bit further apart now. They're still going to be close, but they're just going to be a little bit further away. And not as many as well. At least on the Bakerloo service. When's the 15 mile an hour speed limit? Because I saw that on the... Uh Saw that on the HUDRP that it was get there we go. Oh, okay, that just changed rapidly. We're now up to 45. Let's go. can really get the power going now. Might be able to see some famous landmarks of London now. I think one of them might actually be in a stop or two. Pretty sure it's not here because the name doesn't even make sense to it. Plus, the uh, station doesn't look like it. Already can lock the doors and get going. I think it might be. Oh, it's actually going to be in a few stops. Never mind. Yeah, just checking where the step where the stops are might have uh, might have given away what the landmark may be. Well, so I don't really think it's a landmark to some people. I guess it's just more of a, uh, a th you know a good thing to see. But at least for me, I call it a landmark. As it. It is quite famous for me. Oh, third eight. Just saw that. Two of the horn as we go past. Why not? 
Williston Junction right now. Here we are. Open the doors and get ready to close them right away because we are quite late. As is tradition with uh, UK trains, we're usually late. We can actually go up to 45 uh, speed limit soon as well. But I think you can see, you know, just going over ground and, you know, these speed limits are... Well, not speed limits, but these stations, you know, are, are very different. You know, when we were down underground, you know, there were only a few hundred, you know, yards, you know, between each other. Now, you know, they're... Uh, they're, they're getting in the, you know, the naught points so miles. Aren't that close anymore. There we are. I've unlocked them. <laughs> Close the doors and off we go to Stonebridge Park. Nord point nine miles, nearly like a full mile away. It probably is. I think, you know, th th this is what I was meaning, you know, down in the uh, underground tunnels. Yes, there were, you know, a few that were on the naught point so miles to go but it wasn't by a lot you know it was only by like 0.7 i think it was the max one mostly they were just a few hundred yards away over there to the right that is wembley stadium which is the landmark i was talking about you can tell because it has the wembley arch that is Wembley Stadium, the home of English football. That's what I wanted to see. Very famous venue for uh, football. The venue I have been to in real life. Uh, only once, though, and it wasn't even for Engli an English match. <laughs> it was for... Um, the Wembley Cup, um, obviously Sideman FC versus Town FC, it was the one in 2017. I was, uh, I was able to go for that match. Good match it was. Managed to see Hashtag United, did I just say Sideman? I meant Hashtag. Hashtag United versus Town. I mean. And, uh, yeah, even though loads of people were, uh, 
I guess more wanting Techers Town to win. Hashtag still won. They were who I was supporting. I find it hilarious as well how I because I actually did vlog it. I said in the vlog that I've never been to a football match before in person. The only one I had gone to is um, like a, a a local, you know, like our town's football club, uh, and that was only once as well. I, I find it hilarious how I look back on that video now and then obviously now in present day I work for a football club and as long as I can go to all of their home games and record them because I'm the videographer for the for the club it's a, it's another local club we have like a few, I guess a few clubs uh, I guess two known clubs it's another one but yeah i find it hilarious how i said that how i've only been to one football game before and i'm going to one like at least every other week i'm saying at the moment you know there once was you know a time where we had three games in seven days. That was uh That was interesting. This is where uh we got off when we went to Wembley. I think the actual, you know, placement of where Wembley is isn't fully accurate in this game. But at least, you know, there's a resemblance of the famous stadium. Because I remember going out of the tube station and it being right in front of your eyes. As soon as you get over, you know, on the, you know, actual concourse of the station and you look out through the doors, Wembley is just sat there. In this game, it looked like it was a little bit off to the side and not at the correct angle from how I remember it. But as I said, at least it has, you know, the resemblance in this you know, in the game of of the stadium. I think around here is like the Wembley Arena as well. Um, you know, where concerts and things like that are. Things that aren't... Well, I say concerts, you know, things that, you know, things that can't be done outdoors. Obviously, I know the Wembley, uh, you know, Wembley can be, can shut the roof. Um, of that stadium but I mean like um, I think Strictly or th something like that was on um, on a live tour or something um, you know th things that require sort of like a floor and uh, not really you know grass or you know things like that because they can all be done in in the stadium. But here, here we are at North Wembley. When I went to Wembley, I didn't go on the Bakerloo line. I think I went on a on a different service because uh, I went from King's Cross to Wembley. 
Bakerloo isn't the only service that um that serves Wembley. You know, many services stop there. And then they go to different places depending what service they are running. We've got 22,000 action points at the moment. And I'm predicting that there's going to be a few more to go, but we've got three stations left in this route now. Not long and not long. Not there, if I can even speak. Not long now. Look at some uh, other sites of London. Not, I mean, not really much to uh, to see anymore. I think the you know major one I wanted to see was Wembley uh, Stadium. Which I know sounds weird coming from someone who literally was brought up in the UK. <laughs> and I don't really know many, you know, like, famous, famous landmarks of London, obviously. I know most of them. And I think the only one that we will be seeing on this journey is probably Wembley. Because, you know, obviously London's big, you know, it's absolutely massive. You know, as I said, it is a city. I mean, there's many landmarks that I do know of, but I don't know of any famous landmarks in, you know, this side of um, London, because this is the very uh, western side of London. It's not central London, which is where the, you know, I think core, as it would be, landmarks are, you know, like... Um, Big Ben, Parliament, London Eye, you know, London Bridge, Tower of London, you know, all of that good stuff. Buckingham Palace. All of those, you know, very famous landmarks. And, you know, obviously Wembley probably isn't one, but for someone like me who likes their football, I always love seeing that. Whenever I drive past here and, you know, train sim, I always have to go external and have a look at that beautiful stadium. Even though it's probably not fully rendered in, you know, to have anything, you know, sort of like on it and is a little bit greyed out, you know, and not that's, you know, not really a spot of colour on there. It's always nice just to, you know, see the resemblance of Wembley Stadium and obviously make sure that they have the arch in. I love to see it. Anyway, next up, Kenton. And then after that, we'll be going to the final stop of this scenario. So hopefully, once again, we will be able to get a, uh, a gold medal on this scenario. I hope you guys are enjoying these uh, Train Sim World 3 videos because I'm really enjoying the game. Yes, it's still that thing of, you know, like I'm getting to record these videos and I have no idea what to talk about. I try and think of things, you know, off the top of my head of what I could say in these videos, but, you know, mainly it still comes down to the thing of, you know, like I, I have no idea. <laughs> Which is, you know, why I, uh, I don't know really, you know, like it's, it's more of a game where you just play. Do you know what I mean? You know, I think simulators have a very different feel to, to some other games, you know, things like Fortnite, you know, you'll be commentating on what you're doing with simulator games like Train Sim World 3, you know. Euro truck. There's not that much to talk about. And it's more of a simulator or game where you just sit down and you play. You know, you don't, you don't talk at all. And that is why I try and think of, you know, like, stories to tell and 
things like that. Obviously, you try and make it, you know, somewhat relevant to, you know, this route, which, you know, in my, you know, in my, what I was trying to do here, you know, was talk about my experiences when I went on the, on the underground and, you know, when I went to Wembley and things like that. But the other times, I have no idea what to say at all. But with that being said, we are now approaching the final station of this scenario. 24,000 action points. So we should get a... Uh, we should be able to get a gold medal, I think. Obviously, we haven't finished yet. We're still climbing some action points. We aren't done. You need to be very careful when stopping here, though, because there is a uh, a red signal at the end of this, and we do not want to pass that. Otherwise, the scenario is over just like that, and we won't get anything. So we do need to be careful when we stop. We do not want to exceed that signal. And I think with that being said, I might just stop a little short of where it's asking us to stop if the signal, you know, is literally at the end of the platform. I think we should be alright to stop here. By the end of the platform, I meant like where we're supposed to stop do you know what i mean you know just stop a little bit short of it just so we can make sure that we have it but when it's there it's fine you know just after the station that's good but there we go we have finished oh a major lag there we've finished this route as you can see i don't think we have to uh take this to the depot or anything i think we're uh pretty much sorted And it is the Bakerloo line. Thank you for completing this run. Let's see how you performed. I'm very intrigued to see. Let's see our breakdown. Come on. Here it is. <laughs> you can just see green lines going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down from where we were, you know, stopping and starting. A bit of, you know, speeding here and there, but obviously... It's the Bakerloo line. <laughs> Not really a, uh, you know, you, you can't expect, a, you know, a perfect journey, I guess. As you can see here, we did indeed get the gold medal. 25.6 thousand action points. Level 31 on, uh, on the game. Or on my profile, at least. Level 9 on the Bakerloo line. And obviously level 11 driving this... This, uh, this train. Um, obviously, it took us nearly an hour to do. Travelled a distance or a total distance of 14.6 miles. This is the stopping accuracy. Let's see what the uh, best stop was. Uh, there was a zero there. And I think that's probably the uh, best stopping position. 0 0.8 yards at Paddington Station. That's a, that's a good stopping position, that. Mostly on time as well. I think there were a few bits here and there where we were a little bit late. But uh, that's what you get from a running service. So I think that's going to conclude this video here. So I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure to drop a like on it. That would be awesome and thanks very much. Also make sure to subscribe as well if you aren't done so already for more videos. And I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. But until then, take care and peace out.